What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, welcome to Tipsy Thursday. My name is Billy Reddick. Um, you know, I, I came up with this Tipsy Thursday thing because uh, it's just situations that are still a little situation that I'm going through right now. Uh, but today, what I want to talk about is um, some tips for people that are looking for employment. Um, so come December the 3rd, that will mark one month since I since my last day I've worked. All right. Now, God has blessed me. He's truly blessed me with some wonderful family members. Um, um, he just blessed me all together. He, he, he really has. Um, but, you know, I, to give you a little of my background, um, I have a bachelor's degree in business administration from Bacon College. And actually, I'm going to talk a little bit about that today, too. Um, I have a I have a clip that I want to share with you all. But uh, I have a bachelor's degree from Bacon College. Um, I have a master's degree in uh, public administration from the Florida A&M University, the best HBCU um, in all the land that sits on the highest of seven hills in Tallahassee, Florida. I just had to put that out there because I like saying it. <laughs> but, um, but it, it, you know, and I have 14 years of experience in my field. Um, now, since I've graduated from college, I've only worked in one industry. And that right there is workforce development. Now, I have had little part-time jobs. I've worked at FAMU part-time. That did not last long. I couldn't do it. Uh, doing housing assistance, sitting at the front desk. Uh, I'm a busybody. So just sitting down, not doing nothing, just watching students come in and out, take a walk, make sure that they not doing, making sure that they doing what they supposed to do. That, that just wasn't for me. Um, I also worked, uh, probably about eight to 10 months at, GNC uh, when I lived in Oklahoma. Um, and then I did <laughs> probably about six, seven weeks at Lowe's. Um, yeah, that wasn't for me. But all in all, I have 14 years of experience in workforce development. Um, so what I want to say first is for the people that's out there that's looking for employment, yo, with my experience and my education, it's hard. Uh, but what I want to say to you is don't give up. Do not give up. Um, this right here is a time for you to really sit back and redefine who you are, right? Especially if you're having a hard time um, finding employment. Um, so what I want to do is my tips for the day. What I want to do is I want to take you through my routine. So I wake up about five o'clock every morning. Uh, I wake my son up at 530. But when I wake up at five o'clock, the first thing I do is check my email. Now, let me also say the last time I check my email every day is probably around about eight o'clock at night. Now, I know that I'm not going to get an email from a hiring manager between eight o'clock at night and five o'clock in the morning. It just ain't going to happen. They they are not going to be emailing me that time of night. But that already is just a regular routine that I get into. Um, after my son goes off to school, I get up, um, wash up and everything. And then I either go have some tea or I have me a quick breakfast. Um, once I do that right there, I come upstairs and I do at least five job searches. All right. Do at least five job searches. And when I say job searches, I mean, I apply for at least five jobs a day. So and I've been doing that every day since um, since I became unemployed. So every day since third, fourth, fifth, sixth, since um, November the 6th, I've been doing at least five, um, at least five applications a day. Um, I've had two interviews, I think, two or three interviews. I've you know, went in, redid my resume over and over again for each job that I applied for, still have not gotten none. So it can become discouraging, but what I would say is don't give up. All right. So after I after I, I check my emails, I, I do my my five job applications. The next thing that I do is I start working on me. Um, you know, I got I got a few businesses. You can't see it up here on my wall, but I got a few businesses that I'm I'm actually uh pursuing right now. Um, and when I say work on me, that doesn't mean that you have to actually be like in the day, excuse me, in the day of in the day, day to day operations of that business. Right. It could be that you are searching the web, trying to find out how to get started, where to get started. But, you know, you want to do something, something um, to get started, um, to start going down that endeavor. Right. Um, the next thing that I would say is. Find out what it is. Well, actually, this is right here will actually be the first thing. Find out what you're good at. All right. So when you're applying for jobs, it's something that you're putting on your resume to say that, hey, I can do this. 
I want you to take a step back and I want you to ask yourself, is this something that I can do for myself and offer it to businesses? Because if it's something that you can do for yourself, guess what? Do it. Do it. Do your research online. Find out, okay, what do I need to do to get this business started? Who's going to be my target customers, right? Uh, I was listening to um, a TikTok video um, and the guy who started his own photography uh, business, he said that when he first started, he had to, he had to, everything he did was for free. Everything he did was for free. So guess what? You may have to do it for free. You may have to do it for free um, just to build up that clientele. And after you do it for free and they see how good you are at what it is that you're doing for your business, guess what? That free turn into money, right? That free turn into referrals to other organizations, to other individuals that you can assist. All right. So just take a step back, find out what it is that you are actually good at. All right. Find out what it is that you're actually good at. And then from there, from there, that's where you can start um, finding out what you need to do in order to start that business. All right. So after I work on my business, the next thing that I do is I go and I try to find some trainings. Um, So I signed up for LinkedIn Premium. They have a lot of free trainings on there. It's like forty dollars a month. I think it's forty dollars that that that's well vested. Right. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do with that membership. But um, I'm like right now I'm going through a project management certification. Um, Also, um, I'm looking at um, I think it's Scrum. No, Scrum is not on. There. It's another sort of. Oh, um, um, product, product development is another one that I'm looking at because of some, some of the things that I'm trying to do with my businesses. Those are two certifications that I'm looking at on LinkedIn. Um, so, um, so I invest in myself, all right. Um, from there. So, you know, to be honest between checking my emails, um, applying for jobs, investing, investing in myself, that right there is about my eight hour day. That that's like I'm not sitting here um being lazy, not doing anything. Like I'm I'm out here on this computer, like doing something to be productive. Um, I'm either being productive on trying to go and work for somebody, or I'm being productive trying to build my own business, or I'm being productive by investing in my mind. All right. Investing in my mind, picking up more skills because those skills are gonna either help me land that job that I'm looking for or help me build my business. All right. So that right there is that right there's my tipsy thirsty for you all that's out there that's struggling that's saying that hey there's no jobs out here for me. All of these jobs out here, but it's nobody hiring. Trust me, I see it. I get it. I get it. Uh, but hey, stay of course. Um, whatever it is, it, it's gonna come through for you. Whatever it is, it's gonna come through for you. All right. So that does for that right there is for my people that's out there that's unemployed like myself. Uh, keep your head up. Keep keep going at it. Like I say, find out, you know, ask yourself, like, what is my purpose? Like, what am I good at? All right. Those are the things that you want to ask yourself. And then from there, you know, you can decide on, OK, you know what? I'm going to do this myself. All right. If you want another company to bet on you, you got to first bet on yourself. All right. And by having that confidence alone, something will come. All right. So the next thing that I want to talk about is I want to stay down this rim right here of this unemployment thing um, of unemployment. Right. Um, so and this is going to be more of the religion side. So if you're not into religion, um, if you don't believe in God, this right here is probably not. This is a this is a session that you don't want to probably listen to. Um, but back in 2005, for first, um, I, um, I wrote a book. Um, and in that book. I talked about on um, the main character putting the police on a high speed chase. Well, that part of the book that I wrote, that right there was actually based off of my life. Um, it was. Um, I graduated from high school, probably had been out of high school about two years or so. Um, I was a sophomore, finishing up my sophomore year in college at Tallahassee Community College. Um, and we went out for drinks and on the way back, I was just driving. We was talking and driving, and the police got behind us. Um, I was doing, I think they said it was a 96, 97, and a 55. I think that's 55, something like that. So um, put the police out. I was like, you know, hey, I'm, I'm not going to go to 
jail. We haven't been drinking a little bit, so I'm like, I'm not going to go to jail. That, 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 not for DUI. So I put him on a high speed chase. But I, I, I tell you that right there because at that point, I thought I had everything going on in college. You know, everything going well. Um, the only thing that wasn't going well was that I wasn't devoting any of my time to God. I really wasn't. Um, you know, I didn't. Um, I wasn't going to church. I wasn't praying. I wasn't giving him that time. And and I believe and this is this is just me. I believe that that's when God said, OK, all right. So you don't forgot how you forgot who gave you this, you know, who gave you who helped you get to where who blessed you to get a receive a scholarship to go to Florida State University, even though I messed that up. Um, hey, that right. there will be for another show, <laughs> even though I messed that up. Um, you know, he, he gave me that ability. He, the way that I think my, how intelligent I am, like that right there just wasn't something that I just built overnight. Like, I, I feel like that's something that I was truly blessed with. And because I was not giving that time to God, you know, and if you serve the same God that I serve, he's a jealous God. All right. And if you put other things before him, he will take those things out of your life. And guess what? He took the streets out of my life because I was out there living reckless. You hear me? I was out there re- living reckless. So he took those things out of my life. Right. Um, after, um, you know, um, I put the police on the high speed chase. Uh, this is how desperate I was. y'all. I had <laughs> I had to win it sworn in, uh, sworn in at um, um, the go into the Navy, sworn into the Navy. Uh, I was supposed to have been leaving that March. <laughs> so I went when I went to court, I'm telling the judge. Like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I enlisted into the Navy. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to change my life. And he was like, okay, all right. So he gave me 30 days in jail, um, 30 days in jail. And, and I ended up not going to the Navy because they said that I had to do everything over. And when they told me that my leave date wasn't March anymore, that I had to do everything from scratch over again, I was like, ah, I'll holla at you. I'm not going into the Navy. I wish I would have not the Navy, probably more of like the Air Force. But uh, that's a that's another yeah, that's another story for another episode as well. Man, I got a lot of episodes to come. Um, but I did my um, I did 25 days. Supposed to did 30. Got out five days. Got out five days early, and um, went off to college. Went to Bacon College. You know, um, met my wife, my 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 ex wife. I met her there, and you know that's where my son was born at. Got I, I met one of my best friend, a few of my best friends there. Uh, man, you know, life was, man, life was, life was, life was good in Oklahoma. I, Oklahoma doesn't owe me anything, but it helped me grow up though. It really did. Um, so, you know, and, and then, you know, on top of that right there, what I did was I, I got back into church, start praying, spending time with God, everything started going up. Um, you know, we moved to Florida, got a divorce, ended up moving out here to Texas. My son started living with me. Uh, we in church and bought a house to come live out here in Spring, Texas, um, north of Houston. And what did I do? Stop going to church again. <laughs> oh man! Uh, so I stopped going to church again. Um, um, fast forward, you know, I, I was with my company, my my first company, uh, with well, my last company for ten years, and then I. You know, I applied for the job that I had last that I was laid off from. I was with them two years. I was with them two years. Um, and then, you know, end up being laid off. But, you know, I started sitting down. Um, I like to process things. I like to evaluate things. I guess that's just the project management in me. And I started looking at, okay, like how I ended up here, right? Um, and the first thing that came to my mind was I went back to 2005. Um, went back to 2005 and that's when I said, man, I hear you God, right? Um, here I am, you know, career is, you know, heading North. Everything is going great. Bought a house, got my son here. He is selling and everything and boom, end up losing my job. It's God talking to me again. Like, Hey, You know, you, you wouldn't get, you wouldn't have all these things if it wasn't for me. All right. So, um, he sat me down again and here I am talking to you all, um, about my experience. Um, but since then, you know, um, I've acknowledged that, um, I prayed and asked God for forgiveness. 
Um, I know I got some praying warriors behind me. Um, I have, you know, we, we, we are currently looking for, um, looking for a church, have not found the church yet. So, um, if you live in the Houston area, spring area, if you have a church that you think that we should check out, cause that's what we're doing now. We're just touring. I'm um, just trying to find the right church for us. Um, that preaches a preacher that believes the, in the same belief that has the same belief as we have. Um, so if you know any churches in the spring area, please make sure that you comment and I'll be sure to check them out. Um, you know, I, I even taken it a step, um, a step further. Um, I bought a book and I thought I was, I thought I, I forgot to bring it from upstairs. Um, but it's by Dr. Um, Miles Monroe. Um, and this is devotional book and I forgot the name. Don't get me to lie. Um, but I'll make sure that I, I leave it down in the, um, in the title. Um, but, um, in his book, it's a 90 day devotion. Um, I started going through the book. I got through like day five. And I was like, you know what? Let, let me pause. I need to get my son involved in this. So my son and I, what we do is we go through that together and we have a conversation around that. Uh, we have a conversation around, um, each of the topics for each of the days, um, and, you know, and I explained to him that, you know, the reason why I do this right here is because I want you to know how important it is for you to have a relationship with God, for you to have a spiritual foundation. All right. Because if you don't have those things, life is going to be tough. But what I know, what daddy know from experience is that no matter what you go through, no matter what you go through, no matter who comes in your life, who leaves out of your life. No matter what job you gain, what job you lose, it doesn't matter. One thing that does not change, and that's God. And I know that for a fact. I know that for a fact. All right. So um, that's what me and my son is doing now. So my message to whomever need to hear this or whomever this message may bless, um, you know, don't forget about God. I don't care how well you're doing right now in life. Um, if you start doing things without him, he'll start taking those things away. All right. So just make sure that whatever you're doing in life, that you involve God, that God is the foundation of it. And if you got kids, you know, uh, make sure that you're introducing your kids to God, right? Making sure that you're having a conversation, making sure that he, they understand that, you know, that there is a heaven and a hell, all right? So um, that's that's my message on that right there. All right. So the last thing that I want to talk to you all about is so I said I have a bachelor's degree from Bacon College. So I was online and this right here came up. So let me share something with you all. First tonight, the campus of Bacon College in Muskogee is set to go on shifts auction next month after a contractor says the school owes the business more than a million dollars for work the company did at the school. Thanks for joining us this Sunday night. I'm Chin Doan. Whoever buys the property can choose to keep it as a college or close it. If the campus closes, students who are seniors won't be able to graduate in the spring. Bacone's interim president tells News on Six's Chloe Abbott she's hoping the city of Muskogee will step in to save the school. Chloe? Chin, Dr. Nikki Michael says it's a shame that after educating students for 143 years, Bacone College could be forced to close its doors for good. Bay Cone College has faced many hardships over the years with its accreditation in question, financial issues and infrastructure. And now the school is going up for auction next month. We're of course very uptight and nervous about what's going to happen, um, mostly because we want to assure that our students are able to graduate in the spring. It's up to whoever buys the college to decide how to use the property. The buyer could choose to close the school, but Dr. Michael is hoping a hero will step in and save the day. I'm really hoping some, some sort of miracle happens with this and, and maybe the city can help us. Maybe a tribe wants to take us under their wing. It was the administration before Dr. Michael that hired Midgley Huber Energy Concepts to do construction work at the college. MHEC's lawsuit says they did the work, but Bacon owes them more than a million dollars and that's why they sued. We have a judgment and that judgment has been beyond what we're capable of paying at the at the time we did offer to make payments they told us they wanted it all she says mhec wasn't supposed to start the work until the money was in place 
but did anyway. I know it's been argued legally, but here's the thing. There was supposed to be an account set up, and that account was supposed to have been... All right, so... So, yeah. So, uh, for my fellow Baconians, it's a couple of things I want to say, right? The first thing is you read what you sow. Um, I know that I understand business. I understand the, the principles of business, the concepts of business. I get it, right? But I attended I attended Bacon for three years. I attended Bacon for three years. And uh, to hear the president of Bacon, which she is the, the predicament that they in is not her fault, right? Because they said that this right here happened before she was hired. But Bacon used to harass people about making payments, uh, about getting them the money for them to attend school. I know people that dropped out of school because they didn't have the money or they, you know, they ended up talking to them about getting on the payment and they had not made the payment on time. You know, you just read what you sow sometimes. Um, I hate that for Bacon. Um, I even hate that for the seniors. You know, if the sale goes through and they choose not to keep Bacon as a college, you know, those kids that have spent, you know, two years, four years at that school and expect to graduate um, in the spring, they won't have that opportunity to graduate. And that's unfortunate for them. Um, for um, alumni like myself, for us, you know, we put on our resume that we have our bachelor's degree from, you know, this from this university. And and now, you know, if that university go away, like they, they get ready to research it. The only thing they're going to see is, you know, they close down like that's that's very, very unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. Um, I don't know who the president was that that let that happen, that let construction begin without um, uh, without um, having a payment. I don't know if they already had one foot out the door. I don't know. Uh, but I know it was rumors going around even when I was in school. Um, don't know how true they are um, saying that was some shady things being done uh, with the money, which uh, I those are rumors I don't believe now. And the reason why is because you know, schools go through audits every year. Schools go through audits. And if money was coming up missing, money was funny, um, they would have found out. Um, and who knows? I, I, I have after I left Bacon, I did not keep up with Bacon. And maybe they did. And that's maybe why, you know, they don't went through so many presidents. I don't know. I don't know. But it's it's an unfortunate thing. Um, it's, a, it's actually unfo it's also unfortunate for um, the state of Oklahoma. You know, when you look at it, right, they say that Bacon is the oldest higher education institute um, institution in the state of Oklahoma. And here you are, you're looking at a possible shutdown. Uh, man, that's 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 bad business. That is bad business. So my prayer for Bacon and for the students that this right here will um, impact um, also for the, the faculty and staff. That is going to impact as well because hey, they'll be they have to find a job somewhere. They will have to find a job somewhere. So, um, you know, I, I seen I posted it on my Facebook. I've been seeing some mixed reviews and things, and yeah. Um, but what I can say about Bacon and Oklahoma, like, um, both both was a, a blessing to me. All right, Bacon was a blessing to me because it helped me grow up. It helped me grow up. All right, uh, met some amazing people at Bacon, some that are still my friends, my homeboys, my brothers, um, to this day, they are. So I'm blessed in that, uh, that aspect. Um, uh, Oklahoma blessed me because, you know, um, I had a family there. I did. Um, uh, but you know, it blessed me with the greatest thing that have God have, have, have blessed me with to this day. And that's my son. Uh, my son was born in Muskogee, Oklahoma. Um, so I'm, I'm thankful um, that I had that experience to go down there to meet such great people and, you know, to receive the gift of life of my son from God. Um, and that's a blessing. That is a blessing. So I'm just thankful. But, um, you know, prayers for uh, Muskogee, prayers for Bacon, prayer for the state of Oklahoma. Hopefully that they can get something done um, um, about uh, uh, Bacon College. And that's about all. Oh, that's about all I have. Um, so this right here is something that I did solo. 
Um, but uh, one of the things that I will be doing, um, I'm going to be doing something a little different. Um, me and one of my cousins, we are going to start a podcast. Um, we'll have the whole YouTube channel and everything. And I'll still be doing some solo things as well. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure that he'll probably do some solo things as well. Uh, but, you know, so on my channel, on my podcast, the things that I'm going to be talking about um, is just life. I'm just going to keep it real. Um, you know, it's it's ordinary people out there um, that are going through the same thing that I'm, I've am i I've gone through. Same thing I'm going through. And I just want to just like do like a little daily or weekly update on, you know, what's going on in my life or what happened in my life and, and how I dealt with it um, in, in hopes of, you know, that message getting to somebody that's going through the same thing. Um, and, you know, hopefully, you know, this my podcast will be a blessing to them. Hey, thank you all for tuning in. Um, like always, make sure that you like subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend to to tell another friend, right? Um, my goal is to bring you all some real life um, content, um, things that's going to help people along the way. Um, I like to share knowledge, right? I like to share knowledge. And um, um, I'm hoping that my podcast and the podcast that I do with my cousin, that that right there um, hits the ordinary people, right? Hopefully um, it's something that you all can relate to. You know, we're not we're not movie stars. We're not NBA, NFL stars. I mean, you know, we, we're not those type of people. We're just your average Joes, you know, just out here trying to make money and provide for our family. Um, so until next time, y'all take care.